Scorpion 2 is one of the rarest battleships that you will find in this game. I personally haven't had the chance to fight with a Scorpion 2, although I had the chance to fight with the tier 9 Scorpion a couple times, and these ships are indeed very dangerous. Now, in the latest April balance patch, the Scorpion Rock, Armageddon and the Typhoon did receive significant changes. The Scorpion did get a complete overhaul on the ship per level bonus, which is very nice and I was personally looking forward to that change. Now I have to say, uh, the this ship actually does look like the Widow from EVE Online. The Widow is a Black Ops battleship. And the Scorpion 2 does have the same color as the Widow from EVE Online. So, uh, that's uh, very interesting and I also like the little emblems on the ship. They are very unique and they do look very, very nice. Okay, now let's take a look at the um, ship trait description. Now, the raw bonus will give you plus 25% turret effective range, plus 25% missile torpedo flight velocity. The Scorpion can use both missiles and turrets, which is very unique. Advanced Electronic Warfare Bonus will give you plus 10% Guidance Disruptor Jammer Strength, plus 10% Guidance Disruptor Optimal Range, plus 10.5% Scan Resolution, and the Advanced Battleship Command Bonus per level will give you plus 20% Turret Damage and plus 20% Missile Torpedo Damage. So you can use both missiles and turrets on the Scorpion, which is really good. Uh, no other ship has uh, a bonus like this. So, doesn't matter if you have, let's say, uh, projectile turret skills, or if you have missile skills, you can use your favorite or the most skilled weapon system on this ship, and it will work just fine. Now onto the attributes, the Scorpion has two drones, five high slots, five medium slots, five low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. Very nice uh, setup and a very balanced one as well. Now the defense on this ship is a little bit low, and this is where the Scorpion 2 will be lacking. It's not the tankiest battleship in the game. This is a electronic warfare ship that is designed to disrupt the missiles of your target. The Scorpion is a shield tank. Don't try a armor tank on the Scorpion, although I think it actually might work, but I'll have to test that out. The capacitor on the Scorpion is not the best, uh, the capacitor on the other tier 10 battleships is a little bit better and the other stats are generally similar. We would say that the Scorpion is slow, it's not uh, the fastest battleship. It's a little bit faster than the Belgorn, which means that the Scorpion is a brick, but still uh, not not the same brick as the Balagoran. This thing is actually a little bit faster. Now onto the fitting, and this is where things get fun with the with the Scorpion. Currently, I have the blasters installed, the large snap-dosed railguns, and I have around 1.5 thousand DPS. Now you can take a look at the stats of the railguns. They look really nice. If you plan to fight battleships, then uh, this should work at close range, of course. Don't use the blasters at long range. They have really good alpha, they have really good DPS, but the range uh, of that module, of that weapon, will be uh, kind of low. You can also use lasers. The pulse lasers will have 40.95 km optimal range with an accuracy falloff of 8.13 km. Tracking speed 7.24 but they will use a little bit more capacitor. You can even use the long-range weapons. These are the rifled railguns, although personally I would still uh, use the close-range weapons on the Scorpion because this ship is really good at close to medium-range combat. With the beam lasers, you will have 78 km range, 26 km optimal range, this might work if you are a electronic warfare ship that is supporting a sniper fleet. With the autocans, 1271 DPS, they have nice accuracy falloff, overall decent tracking, and overall uh, really good, uh, really good damage output. Although the 
blasters does. Uh, the blasters still do a little bit more damage. Now since this is a cavalry ship, let's take a look at the uh, missiles. These are the cruise missiles. They have 136 km range, 8 km per second flight velocity, explosion velocity 69 meter per second, explosion radius 227 meters, flight time 16.8 seconds, reload 10 seconds. So far really good range, again uh, really good for long range support. With the torpedoes you will have a little bit more uh, DPS. Now let's take a look at the stats, 3.7 km per second is the speed, 71 meter per second is the explosion velocity, 310 meters is the explosion radius, 7.2 seconds flight time and range 26.73 km. This might actually work really well if you are going to fight with other missile ships because you have the you have the dual guidance disruptors. Now this ship has a bonus on this module and here you can take a look at the at the stats uh, once the module is installed. 69 km optimal range, accuracy fell off at 23, explosion velocity bonus minus 28.13, explosion radius bonus 28.13, flight time bonus minus 41.25%. So even one of these modules will cripple the missiles of your target and dual will, well, practically make the missiles of your target useless. So this ship is excellent if you want to hunt typhoons, if you want to, to hunt Mordu ships, if you want to hunt Caldery ships, if you want to fight a Raven, this ship will uh, easily make their missiles be practically useless. Now in the low slots, dual shield boosters, one capacitor battery, one adaptive and one afterburner, and this is where I did kind of encounter a little problem. The tank on this ship is not the, not the best. Uh, the capacitor is also not the best with the current setup. So uh, as for the rigs, well, capacitor rigs of course, and the rig integrations are full resistance. I went uh, with a build that will improve the shield boost cycle and the shield boost amount. Basically you should have around 3.14 second cycle on the shield boosters with 1300 uh, shield being boosted every cycle. And I think uh, that's a very nice little stat. Now the resistance 48, 57, 54 and 50 percent. Not the best cold resistance of, uh, on, on this ship and definitely other battleships will be more tanky. Here you can take a look at the shield booster stats. 3.95 seconds and 1315 shield boost every, every 4 seconds. That's not bad. It's actually really speedy and it should repair uh, the shield in no time. Now let's take a look at the active stats. The DPS will of course be the same. 207,000 hit points, definitely not the highest number that I've seen. 67, 72, 71 and 68. Now that's because I have only uh, one adaptive. I did have to sacrifice the tank for one capacitor battery and the velocity is almost uh, 500 meters per second, sitting at 487 meters per second. Now, you should boost the shield in, uh, in cycles, that means only use the capacitor battery with the shield boosters, that way the main capacitor will be, uh, will, and should I say, should last a very long time. Now, uh, in order to make the capacitor of this ship last a little bit longer, I did change some rig integrations. I installed one core defense capacitor safeguard instead of the other rig which did improve the cycle time on the shield boosters and I did that with all uh, three rig integrations and my capacitor is now at 3 minutes and 29 seconds, which is almost uh, three times better than the previous past runtime, 6.16 seconds is the activation time and the shield boost amount is roughly the same. The activation cost got reduced which did uh, improve the capacitor time. Now you can install, you can definitely install some Nosferatus on this ship but I prefer to have dual webs and uh, dual guidance disruptors with one scrambler. Now, uh, you can technically, you know, make this ship a 
DPS if you like and I will definitely show you how uh, the DPS version of the Scorpion will look. Okay, now after changing some rigs, now the DPS is 2.1000 and these are the uh, railgun rigs. This is actually really good DPS on this ship, however, the tank will suffer and uh, the current stats on the blasters is the same. The damage got vastly improved and the cycle time got vastly improved as well. In high sec, if you want to run encounters, I would use a fit like this. Now the cold DPS is 2.6000. And now let's take a look at the active DPS with one magnetic activated should be 3000 okay 3051 dps and with two of them activated it is 3419 dps for 42 seconds that's actually really good and it does outperform uh, some other tier 10 battleships with only dual magnetic field stabilizers as for the cannons 2197.30 dps with the exact same fit overall the stat on the old cans looks nice i have dual c-type gyro stabilizers which improve the dps to 2.1000 let's take a look at the active stats now with one active it's 2.5000 which is really which is still really good and with dual active it is 2.8000, a little bit lower than the blasters, but you get a longer range on the auto cannons. And I think auto players actually run auto cannons on their scorpion. Now, let's go on to the missiles. This is where things get interesting. With the cruise missiles, I have almost 2000 DPS. The range is 136 kilometers. The velocity and the other stats are roughly the same. Let's take a look at the active stats. With one ballistic control, the DPS is 2241.13. With dual ballistic controls, the DPS is 2508.07, which is still really good at, at over 100 kilometers. With rapid missiles, it's 1868.7 the range 46.12 kilometers activation time 4 seconds 62 4.62 seconds and again uh, we'll be using the same dual ballistic controls let's take a look at the dps with the rapid missiles now and with uh, one ballistic control 2129.40 dps which is still really good and with dual ballistic controls it is 2382.53 dps and that is actually really nice for 46 kilometers and now with the torpedoes the dps is 2386 26.73 kilometer maximum range with the same ballistic control build and with the same rigs let's take a look at the active stats oh what is this well um Okay, I guess I undocked a little bit too fast. Well, uh, I'll be right back uh, once the cooldown is finished. Okay, my apologies for that. My little mistake. With one ballistic control, the DPS is 2703.24 DPS. And with a second ballistic control, the DPS is 3027.32 which is really nice. The damage application on battleships and battlecruisers should be really good with uh, with torpedoes. Now, uh, the rattle not the rattlesnake, the scorpion can be used as a bait ship. Now, you can actually fit small and medium turrets and missiles on the scorpion. That's because the scorpion has bonus on all turrets and on all missiles. That includes small, medium turrets and small and medium missiles. And this makes the Scorpion one of the best bait battleships in the game. If you want to bait a Ortus, if you want to bait uh, a PvP cruiser, or if you like to bait PvP faction frigates or interceptors, then the Scorpion is one of the best battleships for that job. I'm actually impressed by the rapid missile explosion radius and velocity this thing actually kills 
free hits and cruisers really quickly. So, uh, yeah, if you see a scorpion just lurking around, you know, in an in a anomaly or in a scout anomaly, inquisitor anomaly, it's most likely a bait. Now you can also um, uh, use one neutralizer and you can boost up the active tank with another adaptive invulnerability field, although I sacrificed the second shield booster. But uh, if you are fighting cruisers or interceptors or frigates, then the tank with one shield booster should be enough. 26.3 km range, 5156 meter per second is the flight velocity on the rapid missiles. And again, uh, the the guidance disruptors are still in place. I like to use the ship with uh, dual guidance disruptors. All right, well, let's take a look and let's see how this ship runs. Uh, I'm very curious to see how it performs in in some missions. Now, like I said before, uh, you will not see a lot of scorpions flying around. That's because this ship has a very specific purpose. Now, uh, in a fleet, if you are flying in a fleet and your purpose with the scorpion will most likely be electronic warfare. And uh, your goal will be most likely uh, to use those guidance disruptors on the enemy fleet, ravens, typhoons, mordor ships and any other ship that uses missiles. And because the current uh, fleet composition favors drones, you will most likely not see that many scorpions floating around. But, like I said, uh, these things are perfect bait ships and you can really, you can really set uh, this, this ship to be one of the of the most unsuspecting bait ships in the game. Now I have a couple friends that do fly the Scorpion as a bait ship and they are very successful. I remember uh, them sharing Orto skill mails and that was really funny because the Scorpion with the bonus on missile jamming is actually perfect to counter the most annoying ships in the game like the Condor Interceptor, the Ortus, Bellicose Cover Tops and uh, the, the Ravens. All these ships uh, will have a very hard time to fight with the, with the Scorpion. And I have to say, uh, back then when I turned off the UI, this thing actually looks like a Scorpion. I don't know, they did a very good job with designing this ship and the name matches the Scorpion really, really well. Now, the Gaian Disruptors really cripple the missiles of uh, basically any ship that uses missiles. Back when I used to fly the Ortus as my main PvP ship, I encountered couple, couple scorpions. And let me tell you, they only used one, one of these disruptors. And back then my range used to be around 120 kilometers. Well, I had to actually go close, below, below 50 kilometers because my missiles just would not hit the target orbiting at uh, orbiting at that range. And the goal of this ship is to force your target to actually come close to you. Once they get close to you, you can web them and scramble them and when that happens they are in some they are in some very very deep you know what. So that's uh, how uh, I imagine uh, this ship to, to work. And that's why I have dual webs. Basically, the damage application uh, of the missiles will be greatly improved once you web your target. And if they use a micro web drive, then uh, even then, even if they uh, are still fast without the micro web drive, then you web them and you make them even slower. And then your missiles or all cans or whatever weapon system you you use uh, will shred the target. Now, I still prefer to use missiles, uh, rapid missiles, rapid large missiles or rapid medium missiles on this ship. You can also use auto cans. I know back a couple months ago I've been told that a lot of players fight the Scorpion with uh, the auto cans, 
Although I haven't encountered any scorpion with autocans at the moment, most scorpions that I did shoot down did have missiles or they had the railguns. I assume they used the railguns because of the high DPS, but I would still match the guidance disruptor range with the weapon system. That basically means you can easily orbit a torpedo Raven at 20 kilometers and the Raven will not be able to do any damage towards your ship. And that's uh, when I figured out uh, that this ship is not designed to take a lot of damage, but it's designed specifically to fight against other missile ships and it's designed to use the weapon disruptor to avoid or to greatly reduce the incoming damage. Now here uh, I will on purpose uh, disable the adaptive shield harder and I just wanted to test out how much damage uh, I can take and how quickly I can boost up my shield. So now I'm in low shield, it will be time to uh, prepare uh, the shield boosters. I'll just wait for a couple more shield percentages to go down. And now I can turn on the booster and the adaptive hardener. Of course, the capacitor battery will be used as well. Although at the moment I'm not using the capacitor battery for some reason, that's kind of weird. But uh, let me just focus on the target. After burn is enabled, the capacitor battery is enabled. You know, the shield goes back up really quickly. Very nice. I'm actually happy with the with the shield boost on this ship. It boosts around 2,600 uh, shield every three point every 4.69 seconds, which is really good. I'm very happy with uh, with that number. And now the shield is at 93%. And now it's at 100%, I can turn off the shield booster. Well, it does recover a shield very quickly, as I would expect, because of the rigs. But the capacitor, the capacitor does take uh, a significant hit with dual shield boosters. Although, uh, if you maintain a safe range from your target, then the capacitor is going to be in a very good shape or if not in a very good shape, then in a very decent shape. Neutralizers might be a problem, but if your target is a battleship, then you can use a Nosferatu that should, that should help with the capacitor on this ship. And I would say, and I would say the missile range on a Torpedo Raven will be around, I, I think it will be around 10 kilometers. So, if you maintain a 26 km range from your target, then you are practically not going to take any damage from any other missile ship. Now, the space pan might be a problem, because the space pan has 195 km range with the large missiles, with the cruise missiles, and has around 100 km range with the rapid missiles. But if the space pen orbits you at 45 kilometers, then it would be forced to go around 30, 35 kilometers, and that is already kind of risky uh, with the space pen. So it might even work on the Bargast as well. As for the Typhoon, well, the Typhoon is fast. The Typhoon would orbit you uh, at 30 kilometers and once you have the disruptors working on the Typhoon, then the missiles on that ship will also be crippled. Same can be said practically about any other missile ship in the game. So, uh, that makes the Scorpion a very, very interesting little ship. Now, I, I think the Scorpion will not run that well against other ships that use turrets. I think the Scorpion is specifically made to counter other, other, other missile ships. 
So uh, I wouldn't really recommend that you go and fight ships that use turrets. However, uh, this ship has five medium slots, so you can technically use one slot for the guidance disruptor and the second slot for a tracking disruptor. Or you can even use four slots, uh, dual, dual tracking disruptors and dual guidance disruptors. That might work, but keep in mind that this ship does not have any bonus on the on the tracking disruptors, only uh, on the other one. So uh, that's definitely a very big bonus for the Scorpion. It has the same medium slot layout as the Palagorn, although the Palagorn is a capacitor electronic warfare ship, while this is a weapon electronic warfare ship, which makes them both useful in very specific situations. Now, you might be wondering, do I expect to see the Scorpion's popularity go up? I honestly, I honestly do, because again, one of the most annoying ships in the game use missiles, and the Scorpion is one of those ships that can easily deal with those annoying ships. And trust me, uh, I've seen a lot, and I mean a lot of uh, Ortus pilots do very, very big mistakes. So uh, if you actually, wait a second, let me just give you one idea what you can do with the Scorpion. You can use the tier nine or the tier 10 Scorpion, both run the same way, but uh, for, for the, fir for the first ship, I would recommend that you go with the Tier 9 Scorpion. Equip the, equip the Scorpion with a similar layout uh, to as to what I'm using here. And find an Inquisitor or Scout Anomaly in low sec. Then warp inside the Scout Anomaly or Inquisitor Anomaly. And wait on the warping point. I can almost, almost guarantee that you will have an Ortus or you will have other ships warp in on you and they will land at zero from your ship. From that point you quickly tackle them, you quickly scramble and web them, you use the guidance disruptor on their ship and they're practically dead. So uh, that's uh, how um, I imagine the ship being used. You can even bait in a classic anomaly that works as well because for some reason for some reason, Ortos pilots like to warp on zero with a kite build, and I still don't understand why that happens. Uh, I did like, I think 50 Ortos videos. In all of these videos, I literally show how to use that ship, but I guess pilots like to warp on zero, and I'm not complaining. I might get a good Ortos kill at one point, because the Ortos will warp on zero. So. You can take that as a advantage for you and then you can easily get very nice kills. I know my friends today killed like four or five Ortus ships. All of these ships went inside their anomaly and all of them warped on zero. So yeah, um, one way to, to shoot down uh, the annoying Ortus. Although I know that I'm not going to warp zero with the Ortus, I keep my distance. I keep 40 km range on average from from the targets. Well then, um, I honestly had fun with the Scorpion. I will definitely use uh, this ship at one point and personally, personally can't wait to see uh, how it will work for the idea that I have imagined it. So, um, Hope that the builds that you've seen here are helpful. I always try to make them as as good as possible. Tell me uh, what you think about the Scorpion down in the comments below. I'm very curious to know uh, what you think about this ship. And if you think that the Scorpion is good or bad, uh, feel free to tell me that in the comments as well. So with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.